Hello folks, how's it going? So welcome to another One Piece review. This time I'll be covering manga chapter 1099. Start off with the cover page with Odin on the cover. With a cover request, we got a couple of Tanukis that's patching his hair. We get right into this chapter and Kuma is going on the rampage because Kim Bakuri, who returned in the previous chapter, he's like burning homes like he did last time he was here. So Kuma goes on a warpath. Kuma has, and instead of killing him, it looks like he warps him away and takes the throne of the King of Sorbe, which is is good because we know he ends up becoming the King of Sorbe Kingdom, so that kind of explains things. The Oda kind of like narrates that this would go down in history as Sorbe's one-man revolution. So they get word back at Marajose with with Saturn getting word that it seems that Sorbe is, has a new king, which gets Saturn's attention because we know that King Bakuri has affiliation with the, the Tenya Bito. So once again, Saturn is the only one that notices this. We don't get any depiction of the other Gorosei get word of this. So it's obviously leading to Kuma versus Saturn in the present. I don't know if that's going to happen in the next chapter. We'll have to wait and see. But Kuma, the boss that he is, takes the throne and becomes the King of Sorbet. Then we go to the most head-scratching part of the entire chapter is... And it seems throughout all this time, all these time jumps and chaos, it seems like Barney had already eaten the Toshi Toshi no Mi or the age age fruit because we see Barney at the very age we see her when we first saw her in the series introduced when she prevented Zora from cutting down Charlotte's the Celestial Dragons. This appearance makes perfect sense. What doesn't make sense is the fact that she already ate a devil fruit and Oda just decides out of nowhere he's going to spring this on this. Now, I have no problem with Oda going a different route rather than the obvious that Body ate the devil fruit and that saved a life. That's not the case, but we do kind of have questions that need to be answered here. Like, and as soon as like Bonnie's like, why are you looking at me like this? Because she looks exactly like Ginny. And also, a, th a thing to note is we also see the sapphire scare has spreaded a little bit. Since so Bonnie, despite having the age age fruit and not knowing why, she decides to like run around to get a stamina up, so that's actually pretty cool. But then the biggest question in the entire chapter is like, when did you eat the devil fruit? Like, your Bonnie, when did you eat the devil fruit? I'm like, yeah, right. Like, when and how? So I'll get back to that by the end, because I think that's going to be something that's going to be overlooked or a lot of people are going to be asking questions about this. So, and we see Bonnie trying to like get control of this ability because she's like granny time, granny time. In the meantime, you've got Bulldog being the advisor, wanting an audience with Kuma, but Kuma isn't there at this point. We see an old, we see a woman who's been aged by the devil fruit and Bonnie has no way to control this. So yeah, so no, she not only changes her own age, but she's able to change the age of others, which we know advisor, the King of Sorbet. And immediately he brings sus vibes because he also said, I met your mother. And I'm like, really? really now because the previous king of Sorbe locked up your mother and father in a cell before dragon showed up and got and busted them out of there so yeah gonna throw that out there mad sus vibes with king bokori's defeat or at least kuma taking care of him obviously he doesn't kill him because i'm, I'm assuming it's because he's affiliated to the the tenure beat like i said but king bokori is plotting another comeback because we get an article about Kuma and how he's the evil tyrant, which makes sense because of the nickname. We know he's nicknamed that. It's, it's obvious the government is like trying to manipulate the media to make it seem like Kuma's the evil one here. So even back then, the government was like trying to manipulate the media into their into their image to make sure they're the righteous ones. It seems like Barney has control, or at least some type of understanding of her abilities because she's able to manipulate her own age into a into an elder so that's kind of funny meanwhile kuma is like i'm gonna head out stay here and i you do really have to feel feel for bonnie in this in this whole situation because kuma sets sail to try and take care, care of king bakuri who has a fleet of ships a fleet of marine ships they they, they get taken down he's and that's what earns him a bounty because he takes he attacks somebody that's affiliated with the Celestial Dragons. I kind of have to wonder if he's the scumbag that actually had 
set his eyes on Ginny. So Barney gets lonely, obviously, while Kuma is traveling the world. And what's really cool about this is like we get different perspectives and different panels of Kuma traveling to different locations. Some of those locations would become very prevalent. Obviously, there's three things that stand out to me in this scene. Number one is, so we even see Weatheria, where Nami trains on the time skip. We see Muggy Kingdom, where Zoro trains on the time skip, which I'll get back to in a minute. We also see Tequila Wolf with the bridge where Robin ended up. So I'll get back to that in a minute. But another thing that stuck out to me is the tribe where the kind of like Skypeans. At least that's what I thought at first. Until I saw one of the tribe members with the spear. If you look on his arm, he's he's wearing an eye symbol. He knows the three-eyed tribe out there. The only member of the three-eyed tribe right now is captured by Blackbeard, that being Pudding. So I gotta wonder, and because we know Big Mom did a thing back in the day, and had a lot of siblings in the past, so I gotta wonder if Big Mom paid a visit, visit to them as well. Just gonna throw that out. So that's another thing that stuck out to me, just like I just mentioned, a lot of these islands is places where the Straw Hats went during the during the time skip. Now granted, if we didn't see all the places like Amazon Lily, we don't know if Kuma went there, but we know that's where Luffy ended up. Muggy Kingdom was another island we saw Kuma travel to, and the reason why that's interesting is because not only did Zoro end up there, but also Perona ended up there when Kuma first demonstrated his abilities for the first time in the series. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And the reason why this is interesting to me personally is because a couple of reviews ago I mentioned like I depicted like a lot of people were like coming up with the theory that Kuma would show up to get the straw hats away and walk them to Elbaf and I and I'm like and I was hold your horses a minute because we don't even know if Kuma has been to Elbaf or not. Now this would have been a perfect opportunity for Oda to showcase if if that is the case then show Kuma going to Elbaf because we've seen glimpse I mean he's already teased like Shanks kid arriving on Elbaf battling with Shanks already. He's already broke broken the trope of having the straw has to be the first one to uh, to land on a new island. So it would have been a perfect opportunity in my opinion, but he hasn't shown it. Now granted, like I said, it's not all the islands that Straw has went to, but and because of this I mentioned does his abilities work if he's already been to those locations or he knows about those locations. Seems like that's the case considering half of these locations the Straw Hats went to after he used his ability to get them away from Kizaru at Sabri Archipelago. Hmm. Oda may reveal like this. He could change that and Oda could reveal that Kuma did in fact go to Elbaf, but we don't we, we don't know at this point. Plus I said it's, it doesn't make any sense because because Oda's already teased with Vegapunk saying to Nami, hey, the log pose is pointing in that direction anyway. So what's the point in Oda having that if it's not going to play a role with them escaping after the escape? And remember, only a member of the one member of the Gorosei are there, technically, not all of them. So and Oda's hype took this big incoming incident. So have Saturn like return to Marajose after all this, after this flashback? No, no. something major is going to go down involving him and possibly Dragon, we don't know. That That's some of the things that stuck out to me in this scene where we, it is pretty cool that Kuma's like going, every, going to different places to like find a cure for Barney, even though she has the devil fruit, which I said before, it kind of shakes things up because that was the that was what, what I was thinking, is gonna save Barney, but it's like, no, it's Vegapunk, which makes sense. So that tribe with the eye symbol, I don't know if you guys noticed it or not, but I did, that's one of the things that stuck out to me. But then Kuma bumps into Dragon's ship and we see the commanders or captains of the Revolutionary Army welcome Kuma back. We get a reunion, that's pretty cool. So what's interesting about this, we find out that Eva and Izama got caught and sent to Impel Down, which we know because that's where we see it in Car for the first time, so that makes perfect sense. Kuma... Dragon also realizes, hey, you've got quite the reputation on, on under your belt now. So, and then we got one, one woman. Again, I kind of want to preface this. I don't know if that's Bella Betty or if it's a different woman completely. There was a woman that resembled 
her this woman here during the Freedom Fire days when with Dragon's old crew. But the other thing I will say, and this is another thing that stuck out to me, is like she she apparently asked Kuma if how would you feel if I became the captain of the Eastern forces? And Kuma's like, Why are you asking me? It's like and she responds by saying, Dragon won't let anyone else have that position since it's Ginny's old post with especially without you blessed and Kuma's like, Yeah, sure thing, go for it. And the reason why I ask is that Bella Bay is because she technically is the commander of the Eastern forces of the Revolutionary Army right now. We know there's a commander for the North, South, East and West. So that makes perfect sense. So again, I want to ask, is that Bella Bay or somebody else? That's why I asked this because, but that's just something that stuck out to me. And Kuma's was like, I'd like to return, but I've got business to take care of. And then this is where Dragon brings up the whole situation about Barney. You heard of the Navy scientist by the name of Vegapunk. There's a, in, there was an accident the other day and he's going to have to switch laps. So one, that's interesting that Dragon knows that. And number two, at this point, we know Vegapunk is with, with the world government. So Dragon gives Kuma a lead. He goes off to try and meet up with Vegapunk. Kuma returns to the Sorbet Kingdom where Barney, it looks like Barney's training and the guard is like, oh, I went easy on her. So it is kind of cool that Barney's actually applying herself during the, during the times of his absence. Follow that up by Kuma going to Egg Island, which makes perfect sense because Barney, at the start of this arc, said to Luffy, I remember coming here while, when I was very young. So this makes perfect sense. That ties that up. I was under the impression that Barney was going to get the devil fruit from Vegapunk or, or she was at least going to eat it before she met Vegapunk. Well, she, technically she did, but um, it wasn't in this chapter. Diving out of a little chest. Kuma's massive at this point. And Jack, Barney's like, yo, your head's massive. That's kind of creepy. See, so Barney interacted with Said Tomorrow with a rat with said tomorrow's axe which is pretty cool and funny now we get kind of like confirmation of how barney was able to be cured about apparently it involves stem cell transplant so odors really going modern tech procedures here because this is kind of modern with stem cell transplants it's very common right now so with the amount of money and effort involved the procedure is like making a cyborg but he says he's gonna no. I'm just comparing the coast. So transplant's probably gonna come from Kuma. It doesn't really officially state. Oda doesn't really officially state that, but that would make perfect sense. This is where we find out about the pacifistas and how that came to be. That's actually really cool. Vegapunk's like, yo, if you go through this, you don't have to worry about paying me or how much money this stem cell transplant is gonna cost. So that's actually really cool. Vegapunk's part, but at the same time, this is gonna backfire because even though Vegapunk says he wants to create clones that's going to help people out to become heroes which is exactly what Kuma wanted to be or emulate which is really really cool it's like that's going to get shifted because we know they end up becoming weapons for the world government which is which is really messed up and Kuma's like yo I just would have made a de deal with the devil himself just save her and to end things Saturn gets word I'm apparently about the medical procedure, but is getting word of this, but who's giving him word in the first place? This is why I said maybe that Bulldog advisor who worked under Kim Bukuri, he may be a little bit sus right now. Either way, it's kind of, kind of interesting to find out who Saturn's talking to directly other than the Mushi. So the stem cell transplant may be what saves Barney's life, which I thought it was going to be the devil fruit, which would have been the stereotypical obvious route which i give Oda credit for to like switch things up and make it not that predictable however like i said this chapter comes with a huge question mark like when and where did bonnie get that devil fruit if it wasn't in this chapter because i i want to point this out in the, in the previous chapters Oda has been spamming time jumps up the ass with this flashback in this chapter not only did we not get a time jump we didn't get a depiction of Barney's age, which after the last chapter, a year went, an extra year went by when Kim Bakuri returned. So it's either she ate that devil fruit during that year that went by in the previous chapter, or she ate that devil fruit before she arrived on Sobe Kingdom. When Ginny got her away, 
because there's no other reason because it makes no sense like how did she get that devil fruit if king bakuri had it that would make sense because if he was a tied in with the celestial dragons but we don't know because i already didn't really explain that yeah this this is a decent chapter it's like it gives us a lot of loose ends tied up i thought we honestly i thought we were going to go back into the present time but i guess not that's fine oda wants to go all in with his flashback the only thing right now that really these is a question mark is why puma allowed himself to become a cyborg if he was going to be cloned anyway into what become the pacifistas so there's something that that more that meets the eye like i said in the previous chapter when it comes to genie we don't really know all the details about that context is important especially when the double fruit that barney has right now is kind of important to a character so there's a lot of question marks about this but hope maybe Oda's gonna dive bulge into that maybe in the next chapter or he's gonna reveal that maybe sometime in the present either in this arc or beyond because barney's not dying if the past if the flashback transitions into the present and kuma shows up to like rescue a daughter i feel feel like that's kind of like the biggest thing that can happen right now for kuma and for barney's character if kuma visited multiple islands that some of the strats ended up training at then like i said before is Elbaf one of them because if not then that may throw a monkey wrench into the theory that Kuma is going to use his ability to get the Straw Hats to Elbaf like no which I didn't think that was going to be the case anyway but hopefully we get some confirmation of that let me know what you guys think down below we got a lot of dots that got connected from thanks to this chapter so I appreciate that there's a the things that are kind of head scratching to me when it comes to like Barney's Devil Fruit and where she, where she got that and when she got that but hopefully we'll get that revealed in time. Hopefully. That's going to do it for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like the review if you did. Thumbs up. I appreciate that. Subscribe to have more One Piece. Thank you guys for your support. Catch you guys later. Thanks guys. Bye.